I want to say a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to those of us who are here this morning. Amen. God has been good to us. Amen. Amen. He has kept us safe. Yes. We are still alive. Yes. Amen. Amen. And I thank God that if we are in our right minds, that you know, that's enough reason to give Him all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. 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 David reminds us. That we ought not to fret ourselves because of evildoers, or be envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down, and they shall wither as, as the green grass. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen? Amen. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of that heart. Amen. His counsel is to trust in the living God. Amen. Amen. I want to remind us that the Bible, this book contains the mind of God. Amen. The state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. His doctrines are holy, his precepts are binding, his histories are true, and his decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, and practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's shepherd. Here, paradise is restored, heaven open, and the gates of hell disclosed. Christ is his grand object. Our good is designed and the glory of God is in. It shall fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. Amen. It is given you in life will be open to the judgment and be remembered forevermore. It involves the highest responsibility, well rewarded with the slave and will condemn all who trifle with its sacred contents. I want to remind us that it is second to none and superior to all. It is the indisputed, undefeated, and still the world's best self. It is the unadulterated word of God. Amen. Amen. God loves us. He loves every single one of us. I got some good news and some bad news. Which do you want first? Bad. And give us the bad news first. The bad news is all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And the good news is, even though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. Through Amen. Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. No one is lost because they are a sinner, because all of sin and come short of the glory of God. We are lost because we fail to choose the life giver, Christ himself. Amen? Amen. There is only one decision in this life, and that is Christ. Amen, man. If we fail to choose Christ, we remain in our lostness. Because we are born lost and separated from God. We have one decision, and the answer is Jesus. Amen? Amen. Oh, what a loving Heavenly Father is our God. Amen? Amen. He loves us with an everlasting love. And David reminds us that God will protect and rescue every one of his children. He says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fall and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be the shield and buckler. Our God is good, amen. amen. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the hour that flight by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness. A thousand shall fall on thy side, and ten thousand at the right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with an eye shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high in habitation. 
They shall know evil before the evil shall in the play come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in the hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the other, the young lion and the dragon shall not trample on thy feet. Yes, sir. Because he has set his thou upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has done my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will build him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. What a word of promise. Amen. 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 We are not to fear, fret. We are not to fear because we serve a mighty God. Amen. A mighty fortress is our God. Bulwark. The bulwark never fails. And my Jesus has never lost a fight and he don't intend to lose any. Put your hands in the hands of the winning man. Amen. He has gotten a victory over sin and the grave. Amen. Amen. He has conquered death and he's alive. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow. Amen. We can face tomorrow with confidence and assurance because Christ is who he claims to be. Amen. God loves every single one of us. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we lift our hearts to God in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father. We come before your throne of grace at this time to give you thanks for being so good to us. As you are about to open your words, open our minds and give us understanding. May we learn something that will draw us closer to you. Speak to me, through me and for me. May we be drawn closer to you. May your words elicit from us a response. And through the medium of the Holy Spirit, may your words have sanctified effect on our characters. As we have come, Lord, fill us, fill us, fill us with your love, your mercy, and your grace. And may we leave this place rejoicing. And we will be careful to give you alone all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. <clears throat> For those of you who love titles, I have entitled the message, A Tough Assignment. A Tough Assignment. Around 627 years before the birth of Christ, a young man at the age of 20 was called to the prophetic ministry. His face was flushed with a rosy hue of youthful idealism. His eyes were filled with prophetic ministry and vision for the Lord. His name was Jeremiah. I turn your attention to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1. I will pick it up from verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nations. Before you and I were born, I want to remind us that God knows us. Mm -hmm. He knows every single one of us. To see a babe being formed in the womb as an inconvenience is reprehensible to God. I pity those who have abortion. The Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, only he can give life. And we cannot give life, so we are not to take life. Even our life belongs to God. The very breath in our nostrils come from him. So it is, it is with every single one of us, friend of mine, God knows us. Before we are formed in the womb, God knows us. Verse 6, then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of your faces, for I I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. 
Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, to build up, and to plant. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. I want you to know, friend of mine, that Jeremiah found himself between a wayward people and a righteous God. What a place to find yourself. God told Jeremiah, now go tell them all that I told you, that I am bringing charges against them. Tell them, I remember how faithful they used to be, how I passed them to the wilderness. I brought them out of the land of slavery, out of Egypt and bondage. And they conquered every nation that opposed them. I was with them and they used to be faithful. But now they have gone astray. They have forsaken me. They have brought idols into my sanctuary. And they have played the whore, the prostitute. In Jeremiah 7 and verse 16, the Lord says, don't even pray for these people because I will not hear you. A tough assignment. I look at Jeremiah compared to our modern day prophets who drive the plush limousine, the Italian clothes and gold chains, and they have the private jets and the yachts, and they live in mansions. I look at the prophet Jeremiah, what a Tough assignment that he had. The, church, the ten tribes had already gone astray from God and Judah and Benjamin were now going into, into disarray. And for the next 40 years, one of the toughest assignments was given to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 38. Turn your attention to Jeremiah chapter 38. And reading verse 6 it says, Then took their Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malachi and the son of Hamilet. That was in the court of the prison. And they let down Jeremiah with cords, and in the dungeon there was no water but mire. So Jeremiah sunk in the mire. The prisons back then was on the ground. They would just lift the cover and they would drop you in. There was no water down there. There was muck and filth and mire. And Jeremiah sank in the mud. Now when Adam Bemelech, the Ethiopian, verse 7, one of the eunuchs which was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Adam Bemelech went forth out of the king's house and spake to the king, saying, my lord the king, these men have done evil in that they have done to Jeremiah, the prophet whom they have cast into the dungeon, and he is like to die for hunger in the place where he is, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Edward Milek, the Ethiopian, saying, Take thee hence thirty men with thee, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he die. Jeremiah, the prophet of God, was speaking the truth. He was beaten. He was in stocks. Theologians call him the weeping prophet. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 4 reads, Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 4, verse 14. Jeremiah 20 and verse 40. Jeremiah began to complain. And this is what he said because his assignment was too tough. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Let me be as the city is which the Lord overthrew and repented not. And
and let him hear a cry in the morning and a shouting at noontime. Jeremiah was beside himself. He regretted the day that he was born. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my mother, saying, You have conceived a man child. Sometimes we feel like that, discouraged and disheartened. We feel like giving up, and we can't make it. What enabled Jeremiah to make it in the stuff assignment? Jeremiah was living the crucible. I want you to know, friend of mine, when Jesus came the first time, he came at the appointed time. When he comes the second time, he's coming back with catastrophic suddenness. He never said that thieves wouldn't break through and steal. He never said that we wouldn't get sick. He never said that we would die. But he did promise that I will be with you even until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. He has Amen. promised never to leave us, never to forsake us. What I'm trying to say to us, friend of mine, stop behaving like fussy little children. <coughs> stop behaving like me spirited little children. God is calling us to grow up and to be witnesses for Him, to move from our small-mindedness and stand up like Jeremiah. There is never a time when serving God is easy. There will be no jellyfish Christians in the kingdom. You got to develop a hard chair. You got to have backbone to serve Jesus. Amen. Christianity is an intellectual religion. It has to do with reasoning and thinking, making right decisions. It has very little to do with feelings. A Christian is a happy person. A Christian may experience sadness, but a Christian is a happy person. Amen? Amen. Because we got Jesus, and because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Amen. We have this hope that Jesus is coming again. Amen? Amen. He loves us with an everlasting love. What sustained Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 10? Did God promise that I will be with you? He said, don't be afraid of their funny looking faces. Amen? He was, he, he was <coughs> worn down by opposition. He felt self-pity. He felt that the assignment was too tough. In Jeremiah chapter 20, and verse 7, Jeremiah said, O oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily, and everyone mocked me. For since I spake, I cried out, I cried violence and spoil. Because the, the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and a derision daily. Then said I, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire, sharp in my bones. And I could not contain myself. I could not keep quiet. Jeremiah was beside himself. Jeremiah got discouraged. He, was, he felt like giving up. But the word of God was like fire, sharp in his bones. And he could not contain himself, amen. amen. Lift up the trumpet and Lord and bring. Jesus is coming again. Amen. It's not about you and I. It's about God, amen. amen. What a privilege it is to be a co-worker with God in his vineyard, amen. amen. God loves us, every single one of us. How it is that sometimes some of us are so easy to give up in the first wave of opposition. Somebody says something, and you're ready to quit. You're ready to leave the church. This church does not belong to the elder or to the pastor. This church belongs to Jesus. Amen. Amen. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. You need to develop a hard chair, friend of mine. You need to give up. So easy. God loves us. And he wants us in the kingdom, what do you say? Amen? Amen. What I'm trying to say, friend of mine, the time is coming when you go to open a refrigerator and you're going to wonder what happened. When you go to the grocery store, you're going to have count, you're going to be counting your pennies. And you're going to wonder what happened. This is not a bed of roses, a tough assignment. Amen. This 
ministry that God has called, calls us to is not one of caution, it's one of courage. Yes. Fear is an instinct. Courage is a decision. If somebody drops a rattlesnake right in the aisles here, some of you can, will be willing to go through the windows if you can. <laughs> That's an instinct. But it takes courage. If you stay and you're concerned about my safety, that's a decision you're making. It takes courage to serve my Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Isaiah page 167 says, Every true disciple is born as a missionary in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Every true disciple is born as a missionary in God's church. He who drinks of the living water becomes a fountain of life. The receiver becomes a giver. The grace of Christ in the soul is like a spring in the desert, welling up to refresh all and to make those who are ready to perish eager to drink of the water of life. Beloved friend of mine, I wish to remind you that when God calls us, He doesn't call us to make us popular. He calls us to make us useful. Amen. Amen. God calls us not to be better than, but to be different from. I'm saying to us, friend of mine, that this church is not like any other church. This church is second or not, and is superior to all. This church was born out of prophecy. So don't shy away because you are a Seventh-day Adventist. It's time, to, it's time to stand up and shine, to stand up and be counted. Amen? Amen? We are God's children. Amen? The book is named after the prophet Jeremiah. He was God's prophet in Judah in the, in the last days before his captivity. He was a reluctant prophet who suffered greatly under the bold announcement of coming judgment. He had been called of God before he was born. His ministry began when Josiah was king. He began, he began the reformation. reformation. Jeremiah began his ministry when Josiah was king. He prophesied under the kingship of Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, and, and Josiah. He was known as the weeping prophet. While he was speaking the word of God, there were deceptive prophets who were saying the exact opposite to what he was saying. Yes. False prophets like Hananiah, a tough assignment. Jeremiah was threatened by what happens to other true prophets. Uriah was one of them. Uriah was killed by King Jehoiakim. And Jeremiah wishes to remain silent and prophesies no more. But the word of God was shut up in his bones. Amen. Amen. And it was like a burning fire. And he could not keep quiet. God loves us, friend of mine. He calls us to be a voice for him. A tough assignment. For 40 years, Jeremiah preached to an unrepenting people. In the sight of men, Jeremiah was a failure. But in the sight of God, he was a success. Amen. Amen. He was called to deliver God's word of doom and judgment to Judah. His message was to turn, to repent and live. Our message today is to turn to repent and live. Amen. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this earth will go strange and dim in the light of his glory and his grace. Amen. Nothing moved Jeremiah from doing this over and over again. He went down to slavery with the people. He died in slavery, in captivity. He preached for 40 years to a people who was unwilling to repent. Jeremiah suffered in solitude, agonizing over the gross sins of his countrymen. He felt keenly that the, that the awfulness of judgment, which is sure to come. Friend of mine, this world is about to be judged. But Jeremiah faithfully delivered God's message of judgment. I'm saying to us, friend of mine, 
This message that God has given to us is a tough assignment. This is not a bed of roses. I think about Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. When Nebuchadnezzar put his, his God in the plain of Judah, just imagine a 10 story building. That's approximately how high Nebuchadnezzar made his image. Because he had a dream in Daniel chapter 2 of gold and silver, a metallic man. Babylon ruled from 600 to 538 BC. From 538 to 331, the means of the Persians took over. From 331 to 168, then Greece came along. And from 168 to 476 AD, Rome ruled the world for almost 600 years. But Babylon was a golden kingdom, one of the wonders of the world. And Daniel said that another shall come into power, shall come into power. But Nebuchadnezzar wanted his kingdom to last forever. And in Daniel chapter three, Nebuchadnezzar somehow he forgot that there is a God in heaven, and God does not play with words. His words must come to pass, amen? amen? It is sure, and it is certain. So he made a golden image, and set it up in the plain of Dura, in Daniel chapter 3. He did not set it up among mountains and amongst the, the forests or the trees, but in the plain of Dura, entirely of gold, and you can see for miles. And he invited everyone who was somebody, all the government officials, the ambassadors, every naval officer was there, his cabinet members were there, foreign officers were there. They were all invited. And he said to them, when you hear the sound of the corn, the flute, the, the sack, or the harp, all you need to do is bow down and worship. And Nebuchadnezzar knew how to get your ego going. In case you don't want to bow down, there is a fiery furnace. He knew how to get you to bow down. Any religion that forces you to worship is not from God. Any religion that compels you to worship against the dictates of your conscience is not from God. God created us, and even though we decide to turn away from God, even though God is displeased, He still loves us, and He respects every decision we make. Amen? Amen? But there were three Hebrew boys. 